Okay, so welcome to this next video in which we are discussing type 1 activation of endothelial cells. Okay, so we've discussed that uh, histamine is going to bind to the H1 receptor, and that that's going to trigger this GQ pathway, which has led to the release of calcium from the intracellular store within the endoplasmic reticulum. Now what we want to see is what this rise in calcium in the cytoplasm of the cell is actually going to cause. Okay, so one of the targets for the calcium, so calcium has gone up now, what is one of its targets? Well, one of its targets is the enzyme known as cellular phospholipase A2. Okay, so this is often abbreviated as C, phospholipase A2. Okay, so calcium is going to bind to this cellular phospholipase A2, and I'll just write its name here cellular phospholipase A2, and when calcium uh, binds to the cellular phospholipase A2, what happens is that the cellular phospholipase A2 goes from being within the cytoplasm of the cell, and it translocates to the inner leaflet of the phospholipid bilayer. So originally, it's sort of, you know, sitting around in the cytoplasm doing nothing. When calcium binds to it, what it does is it migrates to the underside of the cell membrane, basically, so it migrates to the cell membrane, so it's going to move location, basically, okay? And then what it's going to do once it gets to the cell membrane, okay, so let's now draw calcium binding to it, so we'll have our calcium ion here binding to it, okay? And the whole thing is now going to translocate to the inner leaflet of the phospholipid bilayer. So let's draw the phospholipid bilayer here, and now here we have our cellular phospholipase A2 at the underside of the membrane, or the inner leaflet of the phospholipid bilayer. And remember that the um, inner layer of phospholipids is known as the inner leaflet of, of the phospholipid bilayer, and the outer layer of phospholipids, the layer of phospholipids facing the extracellular fluid, is known as the uh, outer leaflet of the phospholipid bilayer. So we still have our calcium bound here. And I think we need to add a little bit of colour to this. We need to colour in phospholipase A2 to make it look like a more interesting enzyme. Okay, so now what does the cellular phospholipase A2 do once it gets to uh, the phospholipid bilayer? Well, basically, it's going to start breaking down a molecule known as phosphatidylcholine. Okay, so let me explain to you what phosphatidylcholine is. And now you see why doing that initial bit of work where we discussed the structure of a normal phospholipid is going to pay off, because we now know what phosphatidyl is. So, let's put in our phosphatidyl. So here is our phosphatidyl. Here is the um, two uh, long-chain carboxylic acids, or fatty acids. Here's the glycerol, and here's the phosphate group, and let's color them in again. So, glycerol was in green, the long-chain carboxylic acids were in orange, okay, the phosphate group was in vivid purple. Now, this is phosphatidyl. What we now need to add on is choline, okay? So choline is basically just a molecule that we are going to stick off here. It's an alcohol, okay? And let me just show you the structure of choline. It's the same thing that is in acetylcholine, which is a very famous neurotransmitter. Okay, so the structure of choline is that you have this two-carbon molecule, okay, like so. So it's not a big structure, you'll be relieved to know. Then it's got an alcohol group over here, and then off here it's got a nitrogen, and then this nitrogen is bound to three methyl groups. Okay, and to one of these bonds, you'll notice that nitrogen has too many bonds. One of these bonds, the nitrogen will have donated both electrons, so effectively it's donated one electron to one of these carbons, basically, so it therefore has a positive charge. Okay, right, uh, so this is the structure of choline. Choline. Okay, and what you're going to do is you're going to form a phosphoester link between the free uh, alcohol group of the phosphate group, and this alcohol group on the choline molecule, and that's how you're going to attach choline to your phosphatidate, and again, I'll cover this in blue. 
So it's just a box as far as my drawing is concerned. So this is phosphatidylcholine. Okay, so this is phosphatidyl, which remember is this old name for a phospholipid group effectively. And then we've added on choline. And phosphatidylcholine is often abbreviated to PC. So you often hear it referred to as PC, just like uh, phosphatidyl and osetol 45 bisphosphate was abbreviated to PIP2. Okay, right, so what does phospholipase A2 do? Well, basically, it cuts in a very different place to phospholipase C. It does not cut this bond here. If that's what you were hoping for, I'm afraid not. It's a phospholipase A2, not a phospholipase C. Phospholipase C is cut phosphatidate molecules there. Phospholipase A2 cuts in a different place. Okay, it cuts, and it's going to be more difficult to show this, actually. It's going to cut the alcohol group between... Um, sorry, it's going to cut the bond between the fatty acid that is esterified to the second... Um, carbon of the, well, the second alcohol group of the glycerol molecule. So it's basically going to cut here, okay? It's going to cut off that second of the two uh, fatty acids, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to create two molecules. Uh, one of them um, that sh is going to be um, what's left over of the phosphatidylcholine molecule. So you're going to have the glycerol with its fatty acid, uh, sorry, with its phosphate group here, and that phosphate group will still have the choline bound to it, and now it's only got one uh, fatty acid still esterified to it. So in orange, you've got one fatty acid still esterified to it, and then you've got your glycerol molecule, your phosphate group here, okay, and your uh, choline molecule here, okay. Right, and this molecule, okay, this molecule is known as, where am I going to write this one? This one is known as lysophosphatidylcholine. Okay, so lysophosphatidyl, it's a big name. Okay, I'm going to have to go on to the next line. Lysophosphatidylcholine. Okay, and then you're also going to end up with a fatty acid. Uh, a free fatty acid that you have now broken off the glycerol molecule, okay? So the leftovers of the phosphatidylcholine molecule is called lysophosphatidylcholine. But the, we'll look at what lysophosphatidylcholine does later. What we're interested in temporarily is what the products of this fatty acid are, okay? So firstly, we need to know what this fatty acid is, and I'll tell you that in the next video.